live in Chile from the parking lot of Sprouts in beautiful, beautiful Land Park area of Sacramento, California. Happy Day of the Dead, everyone. And um, I hope you all had a wonderful Halloween and, and survived all the, all the tricks and didn't get too sick of all the treats. And uh, our treat was we were going to watch the World Series, this, the third game of the World Series last night. But because it was canceled because of rain, Constance and I had to uh, uh, resort to talking to each other. And you know, I learned a lot. She is absolutely wonderful. Anyway, hopefully tonight there'll be uh, uh, a game for, to uh, uh, distract us. And uh, uh, today is, uh, the, what's it called, uh, uh, Dia de las Muertes, uh, Muertos. And uh, if you ever saw the movie, the animated film Coco, uh, it's just wonderful. It's a wonderful Day of the Dead uh, uh, cartoon, musical, Disney kind of thing. But it was really really very cute. But uh, uh, today is the day and the time of year that it really is easy to think about dead people, dead people in our lives. And as we're thinking of them, they're not dead, okay? Literally, they're, they're not, they're not dead. They're living, they're living in in my consciousness. And so if you haven't uh, uh, taken the time to think about departed loved ones or departed loved ones that you didn't even love so much, but they're departed and, they're, and uh, your your thoughts are, are uh, keeping, uh, keeping them al somewhat alive on some plane, do it. Uh, that's what, why you set up uh, uh, family photos and things like things like that, and uh, uh, it got me thinking about uh, uh, about time and the fact that, uh, say, my mother. Okay, everybody in my uh, uh, that came before me in my family are now alive, pretty much only in in my own mind. My father is dead, my, my mother is dead, my, my brother is dead, and uh, most of my, all of my mother's family who knew her are dead. All of my father's family who knew him are dead. So it, in a sense, it's kind of a genetic, responsibility to uh, at least every once in a while turn your consciousness and the, the magic wand of your memory to uh, uh, bring life back to that uh, uh, monad of existence. But you know what is really only separating us is not so much death, but time. And when you think about time, uh, we sort of conjure the image of, uh, of father time. And father time, the classic image in Western culture is a, an old man with a long beard and he's, uh, uh, he's got a scythe and an hourglass. And an hourglass tells the time or counts down the time or counts off the time. 
in its uh, primitive form of a chronometer. And Father Time is the god Kronos. That's why your watch is called a chronometer, because it marks off time. And the scythe is a is a, a agricultural tool that cuts down grain, uh, tall grasses, if you will. And if it's grasses that uh, is being uh, uh, cut down, it's a, of course a symbol of death, time, and death. But this grass isn't killed, it's just mowed. It's just cut back, and it grows back. Cut back, grows back. Cut back, grows back. So time is an illusionary factor in the formula that is what we would call the consciousness of the continuity of our own existence. And so this idea of time mixed with the memories of, the, of our ancestors uh, that I want to talk about briefly this morning for the Day of the Dead. I wrote a little something uh, uh, for my uh, uh, publisher, or one of my publishers, Llewellyn, and uh, for their uh, their blog a few years ago. And it uh, I called it, Are We Our Own Ancestors? And... Uh, I got thinking about it because, uh, uh, you know, I'm a 32nd degree Mason. And uh, uh, in the 14th degree, uh, we get a ring. Just a, a simple, beautiful, elegantly beautiful little, just a band of, of, uh, of gold or, or uh, something nice looking. Just a simple band with a triangle in it and uh, uh, and a yod, the Hebrew letter yod, inside the triangle. But on the inside of the ring, and, and uh, the reason I'm bringing it up is because the 14th degree ring, by tradition, is what a mason passes on to his son or one of his sons when he dies, not the father, not the son. And so the, uh, the widow can also uh, be caught wearing the ring, not being a Mason if she's a widow or, or if you're the Lewis or the son of a Mason, you, you can wear it. And usually you, you, you go on to become a Mason. But anyway, I'm bringing it up because on the inside of that beautiful, simple ring is a phrase in Latin, and it is uh, virtus junxt mors non separabit, whom virtue unites, death cannot separate. And another familiar uh, uh, Latin phrase in uh, uh, Masonic and just regular culture is uh, uh, this memento mori, remember death. Here's my little thing. That sounded weird. Here's my little blog that I wrote for uh, Llewellyn. I'll leave my little thing out of this. Okay. 
Are we our own ancestors? Do you believe in reincarnation? I do. Perhaps the word believe is not quite the right term to use. Existence doesn't demand belief to exist. Is it a matter of belief that I was a five-year-old child in 1953 kindergarten? Did that little Lonnie Duquette die to become high school lawn or adult lawn? If we're thinking in terms of linear time, we might be obliged to answer with a qualified yes, Lonnie, little Lonnie is dead and gone. His tiny body has passed away. The Duquette home no longer rings with his laughter or the patter of his little feet. Every cell in his childhood body is now gone, dust, lost in dust. But when exactly did little Lonnie die? Where did my consciousness go? in the mysterious time between my childhood incarnation and my adult incarnation? The reason these questions are unanswerable is because time itself, as we are accustomed to think about it, does not exist. It is always now. Little Lonnie did not die, his now just continued to shift. When we remove the non-existent and illusion, illusionary factor of linear time, when we remove that from the equation, there is no previous life, no future life, only a continuous now life. The fact that we are conscious of the perpetual nowness of life should be our first big clue that the nature of the cosmos, the nature of reality, the nature of existence itself is consciousness. Every new revelation of quantum physics reinforces this assertion. But in order for us to wrap our meat brains around this most self-evident yet frustratingly abstract reality, we must invent for ourselves a flickering hide-and-seek game of consciousness we call life and death, and pretend the great continuous consciousness experience is a series of sequential episodes. As a result of a number of crib me memories and childhood visions and experiences too personal and complex and uh, frankly too boring to itemize here, I'm reasonably certain that I am and I continue to be my own great uncle who died a few years before I was born. At first, this realization seemed like a straightforward textbook example of reincarnation, a la Brady Murphy. Uh, oh, I don't suppose anybody is old enough to remember the, the Brady Murphy uh, controversy. Uh, in the 50s, the, the story, I don't know when it happened, but a, a, an Irish, uh, uh, I believe is an Irish girl, remembered so clearly her previous incarnation that, that uh, she could uh, locate landmarks and things that she, she'd buried. And it was quite a cool 
reincarnation story. I remember reading it, and of all things, Popular Mechanics in about 1957. But anyway, I digress. Okay. But in my later years, I've come to see that reincarnation is more complex and elegant than that. A sleight of hand illusion of genetic memory and quantum physics. After all, if two particles can be in two places at the same time, then it follows that one particle can be simultaneously in two times. In other words, all our incarnations are happening simultaneously within one supreme now. And that the things we do and think now changes both the past and the future. In any case, now will always be the only time we have to work with. Every culture and civilization from prehistoric times to the present day engages in some form of ancestor worship. It seems that as human beings, we're all just hardwired to recognize and honor our ancestors. The idea I'll leave you uh, with in my little blog and my little talk today is this. If we are our own ancestors, what if our present efforts at self-perfection are serving to correct, repair, and redeem mistakes and missteps of our past and improving our conditions for the future? What if the plot of the hilariously profound movie Groundhog Day is at least in part an accurate view of the nature of time and our incarnational duties, our duties to perfect ourselves? Is it possible we'll all wake up one day to the realization that we are our own ancestors? Is it possible that the great final revelation is that we are a single and supreme consciousness and that for an eternity we've been each other all the time? Now, that would bring up the possibility that each one of us is the Bodhisattva. And that's where I'm going to leave my parking lot talk for today. It's going to rain here any minute. I think it's starting to sprinkle right now. We need the rain. So anyway, have a wonderful, memorable Day of the Dead. And think fondly of the dead in your life. Because when you think about them, they're not dead. Do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. Love is the law. Love under will.